Eight months ago, Hurricane Irma's eye hit about 30 miles south of where I'm standing right now. It severely impacted Key Colony Beach. Here at Sunset Park, the city is working on restoration projects, and we're going to talk to City Administrator Chris Muniz about what they're doing. All right, we're here with Chris Muniz, who is the city administrator of Key Colony Beach. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing good, Rebecca. Thanks for having me. All right, no problem. So you've been the city administrator here for a year now. Tell us about how you came to come to Key Colony Beach. I had a friend that invited me down here to, to go fishing one time. He lived on 11th Street at the time. And I came down and went fishing and, and, and fell in love with it the first, first, at first sight. And then I came back a couple more times. and. Then I started getting uh, getting to the city commission meetings and getting the, the online texts and what of the minutes and, and realized at one point that they were looking for a city administrator. So that's how I came to be. Tell us about the impact that Irma had on Sunset Park. Sunset Park took a, a, re a, a real devastating hit. We are oceanfront, obviously. Where you're standing right now was grass. Mm -hmm. That doesn't exist anymore. We've mm -hmm. lost a lot of the foliage and the trees and uh, throughout the park. And really, it, the ocean side, it took a major hit, um, washed completely out most of the uh, infrastructure here in Sunset Park. So it was, it was big. All right, and then you're undergoing a restoration project right now. Tell us about that. We are. We had a, a gentleman um, by the name of Corky Spearley get, a, get together with the city and, and solicited the help of the Key Colony Beach Community Association we also talked with the Key Colony Beach Fish and Boat Club mm -hmm. and other organizations, uh, the Beautification Committee that's a subcommittee of the city, and really got together and spearheaded a, a campaign mm -hmm. along with the uh, approval of the, of the Beautification Committee to go ahead and restore Sunset Park. He's already raised through the Community Association, through the, through the Fish and Boat Club and other organizations, he's raised over $15,000 in contributions and uh, is a big chunk of the beginning phase of restoring the park. So, so he's done some irrigation mm -hmm. and infrastructure here. We're about to order some sod mm -hmm. to replace what we have left. And that, uh, along with the city's contribution, should go be a big step forward in restoring the park. Okay. We have a grant from the Tourist Development Council to put in ADA restrooms, which mm -hmm. is something the park never had, and we'll be putting in those restrooms very shortly over in the front part of the park. So that, that would be an addition. Well, tell us about some of the other impacts that Irma had on your community here. Well, if you look at the, uh, at the ocean front, whether it's a commercial business um, or it's residentials, the condominiums, they took a major hit. Mm -hmm. They took the bulk of the storm surge. So we have a lot of uh, private community um, condominiums and, uh, and homes that are being restored or in some cases not being restored, which is a major mm -hmm. hit to the community. And uh, we know that the Cabana Club did a real diligent effort to get themselves open by mid-December, and that's an important part of the community. Havana Jacks and the Glunces properties are an important part. They have probably 75 to 80 percent of their their uh, endeavor back in, back in form. I know the Havana Club recently opened Havana Jacks, and um, it will be probably fully restored here in the next four to six weeks. Okay. So in that, por in that portion uh, along the ocean front, it was a major hit. The city itself took um, four to six feet of storm surge across the main part of the city. So depending on your elevation in the city, it depends on how much water you may or may not have gotten into your, into your home or your business. Um, unfortunately, City Hall mm -hmm. took a major hit. We had major storm surge and scouring uh, underneath the building mm -hmm. and so we're right now assessing the actual uh, viability of that facility and it's not looking good that that facility mm -hmm. is going to be replaceable because of its age and the way it was built. So the good news is is that we are pursuing uh, um, with FEMA and other agencies the possibility of rebuilding City Hall and building, bringing a new City Hall mm -hmm. to, to Key Colony Beach and that's an exciting for me. I would, uh, if the the old building has finally decided to be, um, you know, not feasible to, to continue operations there. I'll be real excited to build a new city facility. It's something that we do need here. Mm -hmm. We were the second oldest 
uh, City Hall in the Keys mm -hmm. and built in around 1960 in some places on wood pilings and uh, it just has survived this last hurricane really. I'm very concerned about long term about that facility being, being uh, able to withstand mm -hmm. another storm. All right, so one of the other things going on here in Key Colony Beach is the marina. Tell us about the marina plan. We do have, uh, we do have a uh, independent um, developer mm -hmm. uh, from the Chicago area, but happens to have a place here, vacation in a second home here in Key Colony Beach. And uh, so he presented us with a draft. This is only a draft, not to be, uh, it's not a full development at this point. It's mm -hmm. just a sketch plan, but there's a possibility of acquiring the, um, the marina, along Sadowski Highway and the, and the property just, wow. uh, I guess, east of that, mm -hmm. which would be the uh, where the shops are at this point, the, the, the downtown shops. And <clears throat> the, the plan is to put in, um, keep the marina, mm -hmm. keep the boating part of it, and keep the marina itself, but, but also replace what was Sparky's with mm -hmm. a new restaurant, and also put um, some workforce housing nice. on, part of the, on part of the track of land which would contribute to the overall workforce housing problem that we have here in the Keys, and as well as some market rate condominiums on uh, the east or north, north east, southeast side of, of the parcel. Yeah, anything else as far as this year? Any uh, community projects, any capital projects? Uh, other than City Hall, we've, uh, you know, we're restoring, we're, we're changing around the way pickleball happens here. It's maybe sound like a little, um, not as important as the city hall building, but pickleball is an is a important part of the community here. And so recently we got together with the rec committee and we, we got a plan together to, to put a new plan in place to build additional pickleball courts here in, in the city. And that's a, it's important to a lot of people. They have between 70 and 90 people playing pickleball throughout the season. So it's, it is a popular growing sport. Wow. Um, I would like to shout out to the commission City Commission for all of the uh, work they're doing in trying to bring this, this city back as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, not to brag, but I think we were very responsive in the cleanup of after Hurricane Irma. We had the entire city debrief cleaned up by um, third week of October, mm -hmm. and, um, and I was proud of that. I was proud mm -hmm. of our staff. I was proud of the people that we had in place contracts we had in place to, to take care of the debris hauling and uh, that's a testament to this type of community. So who are some of the groups that have made that happen? It's important to recognize um, the city is a very small, small staff. There's only 15 of us mm -hmm. completely and uh, without the folks like the Sunset Park Singers who've contributed a ton of money toward the rebuilding for example of this park, the, down, the Key Colony Beach Community Association, the Key Colony Beach Fish and Boating Club, mm -hmm. the Recreation Committee of the city itself, the Beautification Committee of itself. They all are volunteers that come out here. For example, this particular park, uh, we had about 90 to 100 people show up on about a three day notice saying that we we're gonna clean up this park. This park was, you know, we were doing other priorities. The city had other priorities in terms of getting the, 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 the city back in shape after Irma. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, but yet this park is so important to the community. Mm -hmm. They got together on their own. Corky Spearley led the charge and all those associations got together, the singers. And we all got together and we came out here and cleaned this park up in about four hours. There were, wow. like I said, nearly 100 people here uh, raking and taking away things. The city had its equipment here and dumpsters here. And we just did a mm -hmm. yeoman's job on getting it uh, taken care of. And then you have folks like Centennial Bank mm -hmm. who provided donuts in the morning for these groups and, mm -hmm. and pizzas in the afternoon for these groups. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of community this is. And I think if I had another park that in, was in desperate need of the same, I could pick up the phone and two or three days later have the same result. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of community. I'm sure I'm, I'm missing some groups and some individuals like the commissioners, they were here. I would be remiss without mentioning uh, TV 88. And the reason why I'm doing that is because post Irma, we were all scattered everywhere. We had people here that stayed, uh, that were, you know, needed to be here, like our police chief. We had people with city computers like I had, and we had folks like TV8 and, and other staff scattered throughout the state and sometimes out of state. And it was important for our residents, and I'm not saying that because I'm tooting our horn, it's because that's the feedback we got from our residents, mm -hmm. is that having that connection uh, of what was happening here on the ground after post Irma mm -hmm. was 
incredibly helpful to people. Mm -hmm. We had so many people watching that on our website. Mm -hmm. I know TV8 um, has, you know, helped us through that. They manage our website as well as uh, just those updates that were happening real time twice a day mm -hmm. or once a day, letting folks know what we were seeing here transmitted to me, mm -hmm. then transmitted to TV88 to get posted up on our website. So I would be remiss if I didn't thank thank them for all that help um, during that storm. And well, you know, God forbid we have something similar to that, but we would be using the same thought process for communications mm -hmm. in that way because it was invaluable to our residents. Yeah, the communication is so very important in a time like that. So. All right, well, we are here in late April, and again, they're working on Sunset Park, cleaning that up, getting that restored. So many more projects here in Key Colony Beach. Definitely the gem of the Florida Keys here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Okay.